What's going on guys? I'm Steve. Welcome back to the channel. Welcome back to another video. If it's your first time stopping by the channel, hit that subscribe button. Trust me, you won't regret it. If you're a returning subscriber as always, guys, welcome back and I do appreciate the support and the smiles in there because this story I'm about to tell you will knock your socks off. You see this little baby right here? This cute little girl? She is or was Kinsley Welty from Indianapolis, Indiana. She's no longer with us and people are demanding justice, me included. Ladies and gentlemen, what this little girl endured on her way to the grave is unspeakable. I'm going to show you a couple of videos and uh, I'm going to come back and take my time with this. I'm going to try not to cuss too much. But I'm going to say what need to be said. Three people are arrested for this crime against this little girl, which I don't want to tell you about. I'll let the news do that. And they are as follows. Tony McClure, age 29. She's the mom. Her boyfriend, Ryan Smith, age 27. He's the boyfriend. I just told you. And the grandma, Tony McClure's mother whose name I forgot, but I'll mention it sometime during this video. All three of them are locked up. And uh, this is a story you got to see to believe. It, 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 it's amazing to me, the cruelty another human being can show to another. And uh, especially a parent to a child. Take a look at this. His mother and her boyfriend are in jail this evening following the death of a five-year-old girl on the city's southwest side. Fox 59's Jesse Wells read the court records today and spoke to the victim's family about the gruesome allegations. According to court records, the victim's mother initially tried to blame the father for the abuse suffered inside this home. But when that story quickly fell apart, the suspect allegedly admitted she knew she was treating her daughter wrong, but simply didn't care. Inside this mobile home on Denver Drive, IMPD officers were called Tuesday night to investigate a deadly case of child abuse and found five-year-old Kinsley Welty severely malnourished. That little girl died a short time later after being taken to Riley Hospital. It's horrific. It's going to obviously um, be a memory in my mind for the rest of my life that I'll never be able to shake that my granddaughter starved to death and it very easily could have been avoided. Brian Welty, who cared for Kinsley when these pictures were taken before she was returned to her mother's custody, was devastated to hear about the poor conditions his granddaughter was forced to endure. Inside the home, police claim they found a small closet covered in fecal matter where the girl was forced to spend most of her time. According to court records, the child's mother, Tony McClure, admitted she did the bare minimum to feed her daughter, who often complained she was hungry. McClure even confessed she feared her actions would eventually lead to her daughter's death. She's a wicked woman, is all I can say. This poor little girl had, had no chance whatsoever. She had a parent who, well, she wasn't a parent, she was a monster who felled her in every way. Police also claim the mother's boyfriend, Ryan Smith, admitted the victim had been kept in the closet since Thanksgiving and was rarely allowed out. Smith said he was concerned the girl was losing weight but didn't want to call 911 because he loved the girl's mother. It's devastating. I, I wouldn't even treat my dog that way. No child or human being should be treated the way she was. For their part, IMPD reminds everyone to speak up anytime they suspect a child is being abused or neglected. And that the community has to step forward and reach us, help us help these children who have no voice. Finally, because she was arrested for murder, McClure is being held without bond pending the filing of formal charges. Jesse Wells, Fox 59 News. Now, sadly, this isn't the first time Tony McClure has had run ins with police because of her lack of care for her children. Yeah, court documents from 2018 show Mooresville police found Tony and multiple children living in squalor. Fox 59's Eric Graves dove into that earlier incident to piece together what led to Kinsley Welty's death. And he joins us now live in studio. Eric, what have you learned? Uh, Dan, Mooresville police showed up to this apartment complex in 2018, finding terrible conditions and multiple kids living in one unit. At the time, Kinsley was a newborn. Court docs mentioned a three-week-old, which authorities and family have confirmed to us was Kinsley. 
She and another child were found with full diapers. The children were dirty and in an apartment filled with trash and cigarette butts on the floor. Police described it as one of the worst living conditions they'd ever seen. The children were eventually taken to the hospital and doctors said Kensley was already malnourished and had even lost weight. We talked to Detective Lindsay Hayden with the Mooresville Police today. She responded to the apartment that day in 2018, comforting the children and even going out to get items like food that they needed but that couldn't be found in the home. We went and purchased diapers, snacks, and some water um, for the child so we can mix formula. She was very hungry and definitely um, she took the formula in fairly quickly. Documents say the children were taken to a foster home after getting checked out at the hospital. Over the next few years, it appears Kinsley was cared for by foster parents and relatives, but did eventually end up back with her mother, leading to her death this week. Coming up on Fox 9 News at 6, we'll hear from Kinsley's family, who say the system failed this little girl by putting her back with her mother. In the studio, Eric Graves, Fox 59 News. Guys, that's the first video. I'm going to show you this little one minute video that has the picture of the grandmom in there and uh, talks a little bit about the role she played. Let's get it. New developments tonight in the tragic death of five year old Kinsley Welty. As we've reported, investigators say the little girl died of malnutrition and abuse in her southwest side home. CBS 4's Russ McQuaid attended that initial court hearing of the girl's mother and others being held responsible for her death. Three adults whom prosecutors say should have known better were in court today over the death of a five-year-old girl. One by one, they filed into Judge Mark Stoner's courtroom to sit at the defense table and hear the charges against them. State versus Tony McClure. In custody, Tony McClure. After talking to police, all three will now have to face a judge and possibly jurors for the alleged neglect that led to the death of Kinsley Welty last week. Following months of being confined to a closet inside this West Side mobile home, deprived of food and care and love. Her mother, Tony McClure, faces the most serious charge, murder, with a chance of being imprisoned forever if convicted. If at some point you're convicted of the murder charge and if the state wishes to proceed further, uh, if the state can prove aggravating circumstances that a jury or a trier of fact would have to find, you could be confined uh, to the Department of Correction for the rest of your life. McClure's mother, Tammy Halsey, also faces a count of neglect of a dependent for not speaking up about Kinsley's treatment and admittedly duct taping her in bed when she would get up in the middle of the night to forage for food. The grandmother is being held on $200,000 bond. McClure's boyfriend Ryan Smith is free on his $50,000 bond, charged with neglect and criminal confinement after he too admitted knowing Kinsley was forced to live in a closet covered in her own waste and starving. But, he said, he did nothing out of his love for McClure and the fear that authorities would seize her other children if they learned how Kinsley was being treated. McClure told Judge Stoner that she needed a public defender because she has nothing to her name save for five children, one of them an infant. Smith and McClure have late June trial dates, though those dates will most certainly be pushed off. At the Community Justice Center, Russ McQuaid, CBS 4 News. Ladies and gentlemen, let me read you this quick news article that explained a lot more details about how gruesome this uh, crime against this young lady was, this, this, this little girl. And it reads as follows. An, an Indianapolis couple is facing charges of child neglect in the, five, in the death of five-year-old girl, Kinsley Welty. The mother, 29-year-old Tony McClure, is charged with murder, criminal confinement, and battery. She faces sentencing enhancements for the victim being under 12 years old. Also faces criminal confinement at the time of the murder and that the child was tortured during the crime of murder. The prosecutor has filed for life without parole. Ryan Smith, McClure's 27 year old boyfriend, is charged with three counts of neglect and one count of criminal confinement. Kinsley suffered an unimaginable fate at the hands of those who were supposed to raise and protect her. Marion County Prosecutor Ryan Mears said 
Today, we are on the path towards accountability for those who failed Kinsley, thanks to the detectives and deputy prosecutors who have worked diligently together around the clock for the past several days. McClure and Smith had their initial court hearings Tuesday, April 16th, which is the day. Police responded to a report of an unresponsive child in the 6500 block of Denver Drive near State Road 67 and South High School Road around 5.15 p.m. Tuesday, April 9th. Officers said the girl, later identified as Kinsley, appeared to be malnourished and was taken to Riley Hospital for Children, where she was pronounced deceased. The Marion County Coroner's Office said Kinsley's cause and manner of death are pending. Court documents say Kinsley's pre uh, preliminary cause of death is likely to be ruled malnutrition, while her manner of death is likely to be ruled neglect. Child abuse detectives began investigating her death at the scene and at the hospital, while workers from the Indian, Indiana Department of Child Services took custody of the other children who were inside the home on Denver Drive. Now, guys, this is when it gets uh, brutal, so I got to give you this warning before I read this. This is sickening. It reads as follows. According to court documents, detectives observed Kinsley's body after she died. The detective said it appeared Kinsley had feces stuck to the bottom of her feet and in her hair, as well as lice crawling on her face and in her hair. The detective also said Kinsley had what appeared to be bites and other unknown sores on her body. Doctors at Raleigh Hospital for Children said Kinsley weighed more at two and a half years of age than she did at five years old. Investigators learned that for several months prior to Kinsley's death, for the majority of time, Kinsley was conf confined to a closet. Court documents say McClure admitted the following to detectives after previously giving them conflicting information. This is what she admitted, guys. McClure, the mother, said Kinsley's grandmother and Smith told McClure that Kinsley needed help and that the girl would die if McClure did not fix how she treated Kinsley. McClure also claimed Kinsley hated her and had resentment towards her because Kinsley, she hated her and had resentment because Kinsley had previously been taken by DCS. McClure admitted that for at least the last few months, she had regularly put Kinsley in a back closet that detectives discovered was blocked by a dresser. Detectives said there were human feces on the carpet and in walls of the closet with, whatever, with what appeared to be small handprints. <sighs> detectives also found clothes that were heavily soiled, likely belonging to the female child. McClure also said she knew the way she had treated Kinsley led to her death. McClure said she knew everything she had done to Kinsley was wrong, admitting that she had given up on and failed Kinsley. Detectives then spoke with Smith, the boyfriend, who allegedly said in the last three to four months, he saw Kinsley out of the closet only 10 times. Smith allegedly told detectives he believes he should be punished, but not on the same level or extent as McClure. After discussing the uh, investigation with Marion County Prosecutor's Office, McClure and Smith were arrested. On April 14th, IMPD announced that it had arrested Kinsley's grandmother for neglect of a dependent under 12 years old. Now, check this out. Court documents say the grandmother allegedly told co-workers that she would regularly watch Kinsley and would tie the girl to the bed while the grandmother slept because Kinsley would get into things at night. The grandmother allegedly said she knew McClure had been keeping Kinsley in the closet, but the grandmother never reported it to DCS because she did not want McClure to lose custody of her other children. What we're alleging is that the child spent the vast majority of, their, of, her, of her life confined to a closet where there was a baby gate set up 
where there was a dresser put in front of the door to restrict the access and movement, Mir said. Kinsey was known for a smile she'd rarely, rarely show. The toddler and her brother once lived with Sarah Gessel for five months in 2021 before she said the court put Kinsley back in her mother's care. Two weeks after that is when the termination of parental rights was set to begin, which would have, again, no guarantee, but would have put us on course for permanency for these two children, Gessel said. A little over three years later, that shy little girl who Gessel said brought so much love into her home was found dead. We weren't the ones who loved her. They were, there were other people. There were so many other people that loved her and her brother. It was just so preventable, Gessel said. Now this talks about a previous neglect case. And it's short. It says, previous neglect case, court documents confirm the Indiana Department of Children's Services removed Kinsley from her parents' care in 2018 when Kinsley was three weeks old. Kinsley's uh, foster mother at the time, who wishes to remain anonymous, told 13 News that the girl was healthy and happy in her care. In 2018, McClure and Kinsley's father were uh, convict, uh, convicted of neglect after Mooresville police found three-week-old Kinsley malnourished, her mouth was dry, her lips were pale. According to court documents, officers gave Kinsley a bottle of formula and she ate like she had not had not ate in some time. Kinsley's foster mother said she had care of Kinsley during 2018, 2020, and 2021. Certainly it's difficult to figure out or maybe understand when DPS, when DCS in the home that day and seeing the physical, oh my God, seeing the physical condition of that child when they arrived at the hospital certainly raises a lot of questions, said Mears. Ladies and gentlemen, those are all of the uh, parts of the story and uh, it don't make the story feel any better. Ain't no happy ending for this little girl. And um, this story's sad, man, like all of these uh, stories I cover about these neglect and child abuse and things like that, man, it's, it's never a good ending. This little girl suffered. But this right here has five things of many. That's wrong with America right now. Having kids without any parental desire or a plan to raise them. Number one. Number two, men that love the woman but care nothing about the babies that come with her. They love you, but they don't love your baggage. And it shows. Three, people that see something, but don't never say or do nothing about it. No matter how heinous the crime is and who it's against. Number four, the growing trend of non-empathetic people. And, you know, as well as torturous behavior in human beings. I mean, really, what's really going on right now? Nobody has feelings. Nobody can put themselves in a position. How you sit there and look at a baby starved to death. But then again, you hid your shame and your crime in the closet. Number five, let's get in that before I slam these people. The system that claims they're going to say they, they care, but don't do anything. Everybody failed this child. System failed. Said they went to the house prior, years ago. Right? Kids was walking around with diapers on, full of shit. All they did was go and get formula, three weeks old, mouth dry, lips pale. All you did was give formula and write a report. Then they pulled him out the house. How did she ever get him back? That's the thing. Once you do something like this and not have normal common sense of DC as an adult to know that there are agencies out here that will come and take your kids that show you you're not they you're not they're not your priority. They never were. And this was the outcome. 
Now, the other kids that didn't talk about was getting beat up and tortured and stuff. Only her. And we see this a lot. Always one child. That's the runt that gets the brunt of the uh, punishment. And in this case, it was Kinsley Welty at five years old. She should still be breathing and have a nice life like everybody else. But she didn't. Said the smile she once had, she didn't have no more. Of course, she wouldn't have a smile no more when she's treated like a mole and you put her in a, a room, a closet in complete darkness, covered in her own shit, starving to death. They said she weighed more at two and a half years old than she did at five years old at the time of her death. How did everybody miss that? You got a mom. Mom ain't do nothing. It's like beating an animal or something. And people are like, you better stop that. You better stop. You're going to go to jail or that animal's going to die. But they don't do nothing. Treat this baby like an animal, y'all. Like an animal. Now, I'm going to show you something. Look at these different pictures of this little girl. Look how cute she was. Different stages of life. Innocent. Why would you do that to her? She struggled her whole life, except when, when she was with somebody else. And the uh, DCS turned it back over to the monsters that did her in. And they need to be charged too. Whoever was working that case, a lot of people need to take the hit for this sin right here. When I was in jail, we would be so hungry, y'all. This is real rap. We'd be so hungry, we would watch Food Network. It was like we were starving. Hunger is like pain. Can you imagine her? They said she was locked in the closet since November, y'all. Think about that. Your body start eating itself over time. Your urine becomes black because you don't have enough uh, ketones and all, all type of stuff in it. But your body starts to digest itself while you're alive. Live in terror. They put this little girl through. And I want y'all to understand this Right here, these people need to go right now. The dumbass mom, the simp ass boyfriend, I'm gonna get on him too. Uh, the fat ass uh, grandma, HR puffing stuff, sickening. You ain't do your daughter like that, but you let her do your granddaughter like that. Hmm? You just as guilty because she came from your womb. And you sat there and let her do that to somebody that came out of hers. And you know better. Think about this. This whole thing is messed up. Look at the picture of him. Tony McClure look well fed. Ryan Smith looked damn near anorexic. The grandma, I forgot her name. Look like she ate Thanksgiving dinner by her own fucking self. And you explain to me why you had a starving baby in a shit filled closet. That they took to the hospital that had lice crawling over a fucking face. You can't make this right. She said. The mom. Over, over the last, few, she admitted, over the last few months, she had regularly put Kenzie back in the closet that detectives discovered was blocked by a dresser. Five years old. Couldn't even get out. Couldn't even get out. Said, oh, McKenzie was, uh, uh, Kinsley was mad at me because DPS took her. And she's five years old. So she's holding a grudge now. She was so out of control, y'all had to leave her in the closet. What was it about this girl besides your other children that you treated her differently and did that to her? Hmm? Why her? That's what I want to know. Why her? Does she look like a father? What was it? There's another thing. This dude right here, uh, Ryan Smith, certified simp, bitch. Saw what he did? I admitted I, I knew she was doing it, but I loved her and, and, and I, I, I had my undying love for her. That shit don't hold up in the court of law. You a sucker. 27 year old man. You ain't the man of the house. You living off of her and her shit. Everything was fun with you and her. Y'all act like them children didn't exist. What kind of man 
has sex and lays down with a woman with a bunch of kids, dirty, cigarette butts, all kind of stuff on the floor, a shitty ass nasty house with a starving baby in the uh, room covered in fecal matter. Who does that? Who does that? All of the charges the mom had, they need to have. Said it was bite marks on the baby. She in the hospital, y'all, with shit on her feet and in her hair. Huh? In her hair. Bugs and shit crawling over her dead body. Horrible sight. Heavily soiled clothes. You called the police and let them come pick her up as an unresponsive child and see the sin you created and act like you ain't no shit. You ain't think that was going to happen? Willful neglect. I did the minimum possible. Meaning she fed that baby. It'd be days on end when that little girl ain't eat. Horrific. Her body was dissolving. Bite marks on her. Abuse. Different thing. Of course, she was crying for help. Sometimes when you're young and you can't figure things out, you're going to cry. They beat that child. And she ain't the only one. I've done dozens of stories in the past couple of years on this type of stuff. What is the true job of DCS or DPS, Child Protective Services, whatever you call it in your city? What is the true uh, uh, job for them? To come over there and show up? They ain't scaring nobody. Why are these babies, why is this still happening? Same thing with domestic violence. Restraining on ain't shit. Jail ain't working. We need to start peeling people's faces off right in front of those that they committed the crime against. And if they not here, whoever. It needs to stop. That's why when I see these politicians smiling and trying to kiss babies and all this other stupid stuff or whatever they used to do back in the day, I turn my face. Everybody has an agenda. And this woman here, Tony McClure, her agenda was to get rid of a headache. And it was her own five-year-old daughter. No matter how horrific it was that she went through, she just wanted her out of her life. Think about that. She knew everything she did to Kinsley was wrong, admitting that she gave up and failed Kizzy. Now, you failed everybody because now the kids ain't got you. But then again, they're probably dancing in the moonlight or whatever the hell because you ain't around them no more and they ain't going to be in that dirty ass house with you, your fat ass grandma that come over there and tape a little girl to a bed. You watch this girl. I don't want her winding around because she be trying to look for food. So she was skinny in an emaciated state and you put tape on her knowing she needed to eat. And then the boyfriend, you just sitting up there laying up with this girl. The way your house look got a lot to do with how you what's going on up here. So you just as crazy as her. You just as crazy as her. I'm telling you, I would take these people one by one and I'd ball them up in a floor with a bed of, bed of nails. And I'd ball them in there and I'd starve them out. That would be their prison. And I'd have a small hole with a little bit of daylight so you could hear them screaming and shit. People are sick. These punishments need to be sick. You had ample time and ample opportunity after them getting taken out of your house multiple times to get things right, and you didn't. You only cared about yourself. There's a lot of people out here that are selfish. They don't care about the kids. They just think the kids are just there because they had them, they stuck with them. And for any man come in your life, ladies, and just sit there and you live in squalor and your situation ain't getting better. And all he want to do is lay up on you and put his face in your fucking rose garden. That shit ain't he ain't the right one. Man, I hope this little girl get justice, man, for real. Lucky I ain't the judge. Lucky I don't run that state. I'd put that shit on uh, pay-per-view. I'd make them spin the wheel when they have some stupid ass shit on there. And I'd make them each spin the wheel. Or I'd say, okay, you don't have to spin the wheel. You got to stay awake for 30 days. And I'd spike the water and all this other stuff and put them in the room. I'd spike it with sleeping pills. You, 30 days, you survive 30 days without sleep. You, you, you'll uh, make it out. And I'd sit there and watch them. I'd give them food and everything else. I'd sit there and watch them. 
As soon as they start doing like this, I come in there and beat the fuck out of them. Uh -uh, uh -uh. I wouldn't give them no toiletries neither so I can walk around and crawl in there on shit. And I wouldn't give them no bath, bath accessories. I just have them like the savages that they are all three of them. The fat ass grandma, this bum ass chick, and this simp ass dude. All three of them in there. I'm Stock Market Steve for the Dynamic Reason channel. As always, like, comment, share, and subscribe. I'm sorry I went off. I tried to do right, but shit, this shit make me mad. Can you imagine? Put yourself, you can't, we can't even put ourselves in little Kinsley's uh, shoes. Or, 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 or body, this, this, this is fucked up. That's like medieval torture, which she went through. Imagine the sight of the people that had to work on her and try to save her life. Imagine how they thought. I bet you they lost more sleep than these three people that did this to this baby. And that's what's sad about it. I'll see you in the next video. Take care.